Latin class group, so the Professor Oshika is a um, well-known mathematician in Japan. In fact, he teaches in uh, uh, in Tokyo in Gakushu in University. Uh, this is uh, Imperial University. It's where the uh, emperor's family uh, 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 study. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. I mean other people are also allowed to <laughs> just uh, there, but it's known at the Imperial University. He's a very good mathematician. And what I want to uh, what I want to mention also is he's interested in philosophy. He taught philosophy also at the University of Osaka. Uh, are you are you also planning to to teach philosophy in uh, Gakushuin? No, no, no. Okay, well, so he no taught philosophy at the University of uh, Osaka, in fact, and uh, this is a uh, very good when, when a mathematician uh, has also some other, uh, uh, other interests, uh, interest, other uh, competences. Is very, at least I, I like this very much. So, so thank you very much for very kind words. And uh, so it's my great pleasure to to be here and uh, to uh, to give a talk be in front of these uh, young people uh, from all around the world. And, I thank the, uh, the organizers for the invitation. I, I really enjoy staying here. So, uh, and today I'd like to talk about, uh, so I, I'll start with uh, uh, something called the Taihimura space and the uh, Taihimura metric. So the, so the first section should be devoted to the Taihimura, Taihimura space and Taihimura metric. So I, I will start with, with very basic things like uh, definition of Taihimura space. So, and so that if, if, if you've never heard of Taihimura space, don't worry. So I, I will define uh, from, the, from the very beginning. So, uh, um, so, we, we, so what, what we are, you'd like to consider is uh, Riemann surfaces. So Riemann surface is uh, a surface equipped with a complex structure. So uh, it has a local chart, uh, one-dimensional local chart, complex local chart. So, uh, so topologically, it's just a surface. So, so something like this, for instance. And uh, you have a complex structure, so local complex structure, so meaning that you have a chart to an open set in a complex plane, such that the transition map is uh, holomorphic, biholomorphic. So uh, that's a definition of Riemann surface. So uh, uh, we now fix some Closed surface. Um, so, so, so in, in my talk, I always assume the surface to be closed and uh, oriented. So let S be an oriented closed surface. So closed surface, orient, orientable closed surface is classified by genus. So uh, we denote the genus of S by G, and we assume that it is at least one, at least two, so the uh, greater than one. Okay, we, we, we don't consider the case when uh, uh, surface is torus or sphere. So we just exclude, exclude these two and uh, consider all the other kinds of the orientable closed surfaces. Okay. And we'd like to consider uh, the set of all complex structures on S. So that, that's what we, co what we call a uh, Taihimura space. But to define it formally, so maybe it's uh, better to consider uh, such a thing. So that if you have a sigma is a Riemann surface, and suppose F is a, a homeomorphism, well, orientation preserving. So um, S is oriented by assumption. Uh, and the Riemann surface uh, has a natural orientation because you have a local chart like that. So, and the C is oriented. So you have a real direction and uh, 
in the imaginary direction. So it's, it's naturally oriented. So the Riemann surface is always oriented. So you, you assume that the, the F is orientation preserving homeomorphism. Then we consider a pair like that. So the Riemann surface and the homeomorphism from S to sigma. So, so we, we are assuming that the, uh, the sigma, we are also only considering a Riemann surface homeomorphic to S and uh, consider the pair of Riemann surface and the homeomorphism. Okay. And we introduce a relation between, uh, so equivalence relation between two, two pairs like that. So we say that uh, these two uh, uh, equivalent, equivalent when, uh, when uh, uh, um, this one, the composition of F2 and F1, limbus of F1, is um, homotopic or isotopic. Probably it's better to say isotopic to uh, by holomorphic map, holomorphic. Uh, automorphism, so by homomorphic homeomorphism. So, so. Uh, the, the, the S, S is just a topological object. Yeah, yeah it's close. Hmm? Continuous. F is yes, yeah, right, yeah. So you, 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 so the picture is like that. So you, you from S to sigma one, you have a homeomorphism like that. And to sigma two, you have another homeomorphism like that. So we consider the map from sigma one to sigma two, which is homotopic to the composition of these two maps. And if this map is homotopic to uh, some conformal or, or biholomorphic map, then uh, we regard this pair and that pair uh, it, it, Isotopic, yeah, this, this is isotopic. Iso well, here, here isotopic and uh, homotopic are the same thing. So that, you know, on, on surface, surfaces, uh, the homotopy between two homeomorphisms implies isotopy. So that, that's what's called a bear, bear, bear Bear, but I, I don't know the ex exact pronunciation for, for him, but uh, his name, but uh, this, this is known. So in, uh, in the 1930s uh, or 40s, I, I don't know when, when it is, but uh, so uh, the homotopy and the isotopy are the same thing for the su surface homeomorphism. So uh, we assume that the, this, so you that then, then that implies I, 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 isotopy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it implies, implies. <coughs> so, 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 so you, you can change the homotopy to isotopy in a, in a dimension two, in a, between, if it, it's between a two, two homeomorphisms, okay. Now, um, now here, here, here comes the Teichmiller space, TS, script TS, is uh, um, the set of all these pairs uh, where S, F, is, S, F is a homeomorphism from S to sigma, and the sigma is a Riemann surface. Riemann surface, and uh, we, we, we consider all the pairs like that, and mod it out by this relation. So we regard two uh, pairs as the same thing if, if this holds. Then you have a set like that. So it, it's the same thing as the, uh, the set of complex structures on this. So if you pro pull back the structure by this, then you have a pro holomorphic, holomorphic structure here. And uh, the, this identification is the same as uh, the identifying you know, two, two, two complex structure, which is uh, uh, isotopic to, the, to the each other. So that's. Uh, that's the definition. So this is just a set now. So this is, for the moment, this is a set. So, but the, this is a called the Teichmiller space. So I, I, I don't put any topology on, on, on this set yet. So uh, I, I will define the topology afterwards. So the, but here, just, it's a, just a set. 
So, and it's called a Tachimera space. Okay. So, it's different from the moduli space. So, moduli space, when, when, when we talk about moduli space, we just uh, identify two uh, structures if there's a biholomorphic automorphism. But uh, here we identify two structures only when uh, this uh, biholomorphic map is uh, homotopic to the, the composition of these, these two, uh, two, two, two homeomorphisms. So it, the relation is uh, uh, kind of mild, milder than, than uh, that, that of the modular space. So, um, we'd like to uh, introduce uh, the metallic on this set. So, we define, we are going to define a metallic on this set and, and to make it a metric space. So, the, the metallic is called a Teichimura. metric. So, the, the Teichimura is the name of the German mathematician so, uh, uh, it, so th this space and, uh, and uh, the metric was well, first introduced by, by, by Taihimura. So it's called the Taihimura space now. So now we, we are going to, so before, uh, so that, that, that should be the introduction, 1.1. One, one, one one. So now, now we <coughs> proceed to 1.1. Two. So, uh, to define uh, metallic, so we, we, we need some pre preliminaries. So, the first thing is uh, uh, we, we need to define something called a quasi conformal maps. So, uh, before considering the quasi conformal map between uh, to Riemann surfaces, we consider a, a, a quasi-conformal map between uh, two regions in a, in a complex plane, so that which is uh, uh, much simpler. So, uh, so we, we consider two, two, two you, you and we are open regions uh, in, in, a, in a complex plane. And uh, we consider homeomorphism homeomorphism between uh, U and B. And um, this is uh, said to be um, K quasi conformal. If the following two conditions for the, the first one is uh, um, some kind of differentiability. So it's uh, F is uh, um, so a, a absolute continuous along lines. So it's just, it's, it's sometimes you not know, the ACL. So the, this is uh, um, analytic condition, but uh, I, I don't want to go, go into the details of the, this. So uh, what, what we should know now is just uh, this implies uh, differentiability for almost every point of you. So we, we are not assuming that F is differentiable, but except for some set uh, point on that in a set with major zero, it's a differentiable. So that 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 what I mean by the differentiable at almost every point. Okay, so that's the first assumption. Yep. Ah. So, so can, can, can you see? Uh, uh, okay, okay. So I, I, I should start from here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. How can I? Well, the, 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 so, so, so can, this is here. You have you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so from now on, I will use Chrome. Yeah, just 
How about that? So th this is okay to right here. Okay. So that's the first condition. And the second condition, so th this is more important. This is just differentiability. So, uh, so, uh, so, you are, so because it's uh, differentiable at almost every point, you can, you have uh, uh, something like that uh, for, 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 for every. Oh, it, but, but differentiable doesn't mean a comp in a, in a, as a comp complex differential. It's a, it's a differentiable. Is uh, to uh, 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 two just a two variable function, real, real function. So 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 f is a, f is a, a map from u to v, but uh, c c can be identified with the the, the plane, and f can be regarded as a two variable function uh, from r to r two. Then as a two variable function, so from as a as a as a map from R to R two, they, they are differentiable at every at almost every point. So we, we are not talking about complex differential; it, it's a, it's not holomorphic. So uh, and then uh, the second condition is more important. So um, I should write it first. So this is. Uh, Less than or equal to um, uh, k minus one over k plus one in the absolute value of the. So I, I will explain what the meaning of this notation. So here, um, so so write write f as a two variable function. So so suppose it's written like uh, u. Um, probably u u u yeah u x y so so z is x plus i y and uh, if z can be written like, like uh, a two variable function like that okay and uh, um, so uh, so th this is uh, so so okay. This, this, this should be fine. This is defined to be the um, where the, the this this just means uh, uh, okay. Oh, oh no no sorry it's uh, x so and. Uh, And uh, f z means uh, z bar means uh, okay. So uh, we kind of so so cha we change the coordinates. So we so th the beginning we have we have coordinate x and y, but uh, we we change the coordinates so the the of the uh, tangent space. To, to to these two directions. So then, uh, uh, so this 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 should be so this should be the, the absolute value of that of, of the of that term. And this is the absolute value of that term. Okay. And all, almost everywhere. Okay. Should put that there. So if you ha so k is a, k is a constant greater than or equal to one. So for for some k, uh, the f uh, homeomorphism f is said to be a k k quasi conformal when uh, this inequality holds for almost everywhere, uh, 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 almost every every z in the u. So. Uh, Tell you the geometric meaning of this inequality. Um, before that, I should uh, say that uh, um, the the Jacobian of this map f, so, so regarded as uh, 
probably it's, uh, it's better to say that you, you did. So the, 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 this is a two variable function. Jacobian of this uh, uh, two variable function is equal to the, the absolute value of the, uh, oh, oh, shoot, I, I have it like that, minus this one. So you can compute just, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, just an exercise. It's, uh, it's easy to compute that this is uh, Jacobian is equal to that. And uh, because we are assuming that, oh, okay, so I should say this is uh, 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 orientation preserving. So we, we are assuming that this is orientation preserving homeomorphism. And uh, so, uh, that means, uh, well, if uh, for, for all, almost every point, the Jacobian should be positive. So uh, this should be positive for almost every point. So that means, so th this should be positive. That means almost every area, the F, the absolute value of fz should be uh, greater than uh, fz bar. So, uh, so uh, um, every point, the, 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 uh, so the, the, there's some, some, some kind of constant, constant but so it, it, this is always greater than that. But the point is that it's bounded by this constant times absolute value. So, for instance, if k is one, what's the meaning of this inequality? If k is one, so the this is zero. Okay. So that means this one is zero. Okay. So this one is zero, meaning means that this this should be this should be cancelled. That that means what you have is a cauchy riemann equation. So uh, if k is one, then the uh, this inequality is nothing but Cauchy Riemann equation. So uh, then uh, this, so, um, so if the Cauchy Riemann equation holds for almost every point, then it's, it's a holomorphic. So that they, this means uh, F is holomorphic. So this is a kind of the generalization of the uh, the being uh, of, of the holomorphicity of the function. So uh, uh, so we are not so if, if k is not one, then uh, you cannot expect f to be holomorphic. But still, it's uh, somehow the close to holomorphic. So the it's uh, the the deviation from the holomorphic map is somehow bounded by, by constant k. So that's the meaning of this inequality. Now, um, let me show you the, the meaning of that. So, so here should be the meaning of that inequality more. So uh, suppose, um, so if it's differentiable, at, suppose f is differentiable at z, which is equal to x plus y. Okay. Then, uh, as before, I, I write the. Uh, um, uh, it is a uh, sum of the u. Which is, uh, which is uh, the real part of F, and the uh, imaginary part should be written like this, so V times I. And then, uh, um, so the, 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 the derivative of F is equal to, so it's a matrix uh, like uh, this. So, uh, oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, sorry, it's a you. Um, so if you regard it as a two, two variable function, then uh, this should be written like this. The derivative should. Right? And now we consider, the, uh, so we, we, we are considering the point Z. And uh, so we, you have uh, the line parallel to real axis, the line parallel to imaginary axis. And we consider the case when uh, the direction which fo forms the angle theta from the real axis direction. Um, then uh, the, the, the tangent vector should be written like that. So this is tangent, unit tangent vector. Okay. So then uh, the, this should be it's just a <laughs> multiplication of the two by two matrix. So uh, it's uh, Cosine theta plus um, sine theta, then uh, cosine theta plus this is u. So that the, the, the so the tangent vector is sent to such a tangent vector at the point uh, f z. Now, we compare this with uh, this expression using uh, complex numbers. So the, um, we consider something like um, xz times e i theta plus xz bar e minus i theta. Okay. So uh, th this was uh, half of the uh, minus y, and this was a half of the plus i y. Okay. So uh, what you have here is uh, something like uh, so. If you compute that, then what you have is just uh, let me just copy this. So so so. Uh, Cosine theta plus i times um, cosine theta, and then uh, plus um, sine theta plus i times the sine theta. So this is just the uh, uh, expression of this vector as a complex number. So these the two are equal. Okay. So you can regard uh, as a, as the image of the this vector as this complex number. So now suppose that, uh, uh, so we are considering the uh, fz and fz bar at, at point z. And it can be written like uh, the absolute value times um, e to the, the i times the some angle. So the alpha is uh, the angle, angle of this uh, this complex number from the real axis. So the so you, you can just uh, so in general so so it, there exists alpha in the zero to pi like that, and uh, this can be written also as uh, like that. Okay. So in general, the, the, there's no relation between alpha and beta, but. Then uh, you can consider the, this by 
uh, just uh, taking the, the product of these two, these two, so this one and uh, that one. Then, uh, uh, then, then, uh, this is just uh, f z the absolute value times times this is e c theta plus alpha, okay, and plus this one times uh, e alpha e to the i beta minus theta because you have minus theta here, okay. So uh, now we, we, we just uh, look at the absolute value of this number. So um, and make if, if theta varies, the absolute value of this this one changes. And so when is it maximum and when, when, when is it minimal? So uh, you have two, two, two um, complex numbers, and the angle is real. One of the angle is theta plus alpha, and the, the other was is beta minus theta. Okay. So you fix the two absolute value, and consider the absolute value of the, the sum of these two. Then this becomes maximal when the these two angles are equal, right? So uh, if theta plus alpha is equal to beta minus alpha, uh, beta minus, sorry, beta minus theta, then it's maximal. So it's, it's when uh, uh, theta is equal to the beta minus theta, yeah, uh, uh, to, to 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 over beta minus alpha. Okay. And uh, so and it, it becomes minimal minimal when uh, these two point to the, the opposite direction. So that's when uh, uh, th theta is uh, so the, these two are the opposite. So the theta is, uh, when, when, when the theta plus alpha is pi plus beta minus theta. So uh, that means uh, c theta is two beta minus alpha plus the half of pi. Okay. So uh, this means, what, what does this mean? So if you have a, um, you need, so you need tangent circle. So you, ha you have a z here, so you, you consider the unit tangent circle. Then uh, uh, the differential derivative of f maps this one to some uh, ellipse because uh, df is a linear map, so the circle is mapped to a, an ellipse. And uh, so the, when theta is, so uh, beta minus alpha di divided by two, then uh, this is the, this has the largest absolute value. That, that means this direction. And uh, this is when the theta is plus, plus probably, oh yeah, yeah, yeah plus. So, uh, okay. So, and uh, you can see that if the, these two have the same direction, then the absolute value, absolute value of this one should be the, the sum of this one. And uh, this is a maximal. And the minimal, minimal of the 
this one should be the because this this must be bigger than that always so that this should be the minus okay right and uh, the bound of the this one by number k is equivalent to the bound sorry wait, well i mean uh, no no it's uh, it's not uh, this one but it's uh, um so it's not the uh, this one but uh, it's uh, it should be the k minus 1 k plus 1 okay bound of this one by by this number is the same as the bound of the, this one plus divided by the difference between two by k okay so the the second condition is equivalent to the bound of this number by k. So that means, so infinitesimally, this circle is mapped to uh, an ellipse. And the ratio between the longer axis and the, the length of the shorter axis is bounded by k. So that's the meaning of the second inequality. So, uh, so uh, at each point, this, uh, this ratio should vary, but uh, if, the, if this ratio is bounded by some constant for almost every point, then it is uh, quasi k quasi conformal. That's the meaning, geometric meaning of the second condition. Okay. So, so this this was the definition of the k quasi conformal. Well, assuming some differentiability. Okay. So this this is the bound of the dis uh, distortion. Okay. So let me introduce two um, things now. The first is, uh, so, so F, F is always uh, uh, the homeomorphism from U to V. And uh, we introduce the uh, uh, function at the written like that, which is the, the um, uh, this divided by that. Okay. So then, uh, as I said, that uh, the, this should be the absolute value of this should be less than the absolute value of that because the Jacobian is positive. So uh, we know that this is always less than one almost everywhere. And we define uh, kf of z to be the one minus absolute value of mu, so mu fz, and one plus absolute value of that. Okay. So, uh, so, 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 this is just uh, obtained by dividing everything by absolute value of fz. Uh, the, this uh, denominator, the numerator should be divided by the absolute value of the fz. Then you get uh, this one. Okay. So this is nothing but the, 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 this one. And uh, so, so, so the, the, the k, if k fz is less than k, then uh, f almost everywhere, then f is k cut conformal. So 
um, so if if there exists some k uh, bounding this this function, then the map is the homeomorphism is called uh, uh, simply Kaji conformal. So k Kaji conformal means uh, it's bounded by k. So if there exists some bound, then it's called Kaji conformal. And uh, for Kaji conformal homeomorphism, we define uh, something called a maximal dilatation. So uh, we, 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 we are con still considering something like that, which is quasi conformal. Then uh, uh, we define uh, um, essential supermum of this function of the KF Z. Then uh, that is defined to be the, uh, th that is the maximal dilatation of F. Okay. So essential superman means uh, you, you ignore the, the major zero set. So in a, in a major zero set, that, that there might be no bound. But uh, ignoring the measures of set, you, you should have the essential, you should have some kind of the bound because it's, it's supposed to, it's assumed to be um, quasi conformal. Now, we have a problem. So, pose like this. So, you, so you fix U and V and consider all quasi conformal homeomorphisms from U to V, well, with some extra condition, well, depending on the situation. Then, uh, then, uh, well, then find. Uh, the most efficient Kaji conformal map. That is, uh, and find the QC homeomorphism with smallest maximal dilatation. So in general, it's not easy to find uh, such a number, such a map or such a number, or well, I mean, uh, uh, such a map and uh, such a dilatation. But uh, there was a case when uh, it's completely solved. That, that's the case when what, what which is considered by the, is it for the spelling T? Um, well, it, it's hard for me to remember the, <coughs> the spelling of this one. Okay, T, Z, S, C. Is it correct? <laughs> um, so he considered uh, two rectangles. One is like that, and the other is like that. So uh, the length, of the base is uh, A for this, and the height is B. So for here, you have A prime and B prime. And suppose F is a, uh, so we consider quasi conformal map homeomorphisms. This is extra condition. So taking each vertex to the each corresponding vertex, so that this one should be there, this one should be there. So among such maps, find the best one, the find the one with smallest maximal dilatation. Okay. Then we have an answer. So so the the it's a natural, natural 
uh, solution. So the, the best one is just a, a, a fine map. So uh, a fine map, so a fine map taking that to there and that to there is a, has the, the a fine map has the smallest maximal dilatation. So actually, it, uh, the we so the if if the it, it, uh, it's it's uh, a fine map, then uh, you can easily calculate uh, dilatation. So it's uh, so a fine map is written like that. So that it's uh, just uh, um, um, so um, a should go to a prime. So uh, and the b should go to b prime. Okay, and. Uh, so plus uh, a square prime minus uh, b, b goes to b prime. Okay, like that. So then in a real axis, it's a, it's a, a goes to a prime, and a, in a uh, that in a in a, in a complex. Oh, 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 sorry, that uh, it's a bit yeah. So in a complex reaction, it's uh, B is mapped to B prime. Okay. Yeah. So this, this should be X plus I Y, and this should be X minus I Y. So for X, it's uh, a, a prime over A, and for Y, it's, uh, it's a B, B prime over B times I. So that, that's, uh, that's just a fine part. So, uh, so then uh, uh, dilatation k is equal to the the maxima of the uh, a, a b prime a prime b and uh, a a prime b a b prime. Okay. So the one of them should be greater than one. So to choose that one, then uh, that's the that's the k. So that, that's the maximum dilatation for be, between maps for, for maps between be, uh, two two rectangles. Okay. So I have just five minutes. So um, just uh, let me show you one one lemma, which is not so easy to prove, but not so hard to prove. So that's a kind of the intermediate <laughs> level of the problem. So, the, but, so uh, I, I, I'm not going to show you the proof, but uh, just uh, uh, show you the result. So you, you have a quasi conformal map F. Oh, oh so let, let me just tell you that uh, uh, the, this should be written as uh, K of F. So K of F is the maximal dilatation for a, a quasi conformal map. So let, let me just uh, tell you that uh, if you have two quasi conformal maps, then uh, maximal dilatation of the composition is uh, less than this one. So the intuitively, the proof is very clear. So if you have a map sending circle to ellipse, and uh, it's uh, bounded by, the distortion is bounded by that. Then the worst case is the distortion, the direction of the distortion coincide. Then uh, the distortion should be the product of the two distortions. The, that's the case when this, uh, this happens. So except for that case, the distortion should be less than that. So that, that's the, the but uh, to prove it formally is a bit difficult. <laughs> But anyway, so the, the meaning is just uh, something like that. Okay. <laughs>